dream with me let your mind explode well that was me this morning and quite frankly that's pretty much me every morning As you can guess by now, today's topic is how to boost your energy when you're a senior. If you're like me, you wake up with almost every bone in your body, just aching a little bit, some more than others. You kind of have to sit there for a while. You think about the day just for a few minutes. Sometimes I kind of kind of limber up my upper body, my neck, my head. And that's enough to get me standing up and heading to the bathroom. But I'll discuss some of the things that help me and motivate me to get up every single morning and we'll get to it. And if that's you, stay tuned. I'm going to get into what you've all asked me for so long how do you do everything that you do? Where do you get your energy from? And I've, I really sat down to try and think of the right answers. And I'm getting to tell you the truth all about me and how I think I get that motivation to get up in the morning and do what I do. So let's get started. Now, generally speaking, what causes low energy or the lack of energy in older people? And the first thing they cite is lack of quality sleep. Now, I'm not going to get into my sleep just yet. They claim that getting your distractions out of your mind, trying to release the thoughts of things that worry you, the anxiety or whatever. Now, if you have underlying conditions or your meds are affecting you in some way, these obviously will affect your energy. And, and those, you know what to do about those. Seek a doctor's help on, on this problem. It also includes your diet. And we all know what is expected of us to cut down on the red meats, to eat non-processed foods. Don't start the day with sugary cereals, various other things. You know what to do so far as that goes. The other thing is get plenty of exercise. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go around do jumping jacks, but do keep moving. All of these things will increase your, your energy if you're doing them right. <clears throat> if Obviously, we all have flaws in all the areas, but try your best in these areas. They even say that non-socialization will affect your energy level. If you're sitting around and you're bored, you're not doing what you like to do, you're in trouble with your energy levels. Now, once again, I do have to stress that I know those with chronic pain, with illnesses, with deep depression or anxiety that you're dealing with, perhaps with a doctor, I know your situation will be a lot different. But in general, I'm speaking of, of most of us who just want to motivate ourselves and have enough energy to be able to do what we have to do or what is necessary. And beyond that, what we enjoy and just to keep ourselves going and enjoying the years that we have ahead of us, whatever they might be. So, Boredom is a big one, and that's part of the motivation that is going to get you up out of bed in the morning. Otherwise, you'll stay there all day. Now, you know what? Some days you might want to stay in bed because you have had tons of energy the day before, or it's a rainy day and you want to stay in bed and maybe read. There are reasons to stay in bed if you have a cold or something's aching. You know, I have been very blessed and lucky to not have that terrible chronic pain. 
I do have pain that comes and goes. The shoulder I've realized is here to stay, whether it's the bursitis or whatever's there. But you know, a Tylenol can help it. I also have advancing uh, arthritis, which comes in my knees and my fingers, but that's also something that comes and goes. I have a, a bad day, but then I have lots of good days. So so I am lucky in, in that area. I also am a person who all of my life, I have had high energy levels. So I am used to doing a lot and staying active. And on the other hand, as I have gotten older, I definitely notice that my body has slowed down. And one of the ways I noticing I noticed it was about five years ago, maybe as I started to enter my 80s, I started falling. And I didn't change the way I moved and what I did. And so I fell some more. I've been very fortunate that I haven't broken anything. I wound up with some black eyes and um, some knee problems from falling. I've done the splats on my face. And finally, I realized that I had to slow down, watch myself on the curbs and various other places. But it took me a while to realize that I was advancing in years. So <laughs> with that being said, I think I'm going to try and stick to some notes for a while. Now, there is something called circadian rhythm, and that's the way our body works according to nature. It is a good thing for anyone to learn to, and this would be a habit that you would have to get into, adjusting yourself to rising early with the sun. Now, I do that. Now, I'm going to mix in me with do's and don'ts because I fit in in both categories. I am up, as you know, my sleep, oh, talk about sleep. You're supposed to get quality, good sleep, eight hours a night. Now, those of us, and we've all talked about this before, right, ladies? We all have segmented sleep, most of us that are over a certain age. And the way I deal with that is that if if I go fall asleep early, sometimes I will fall asleep and this annoys the heck out of most that when he puts a movie on, talk about your TV and everything. But, you know, most of us relax in bed watching TV for a while. I don't think that's going to change for most people, no matter what they say about it. Yes, the phone, yes. And sometimes I'm in bed before I go to sleep and I'm editing. That's supposed to be a no-no too, because I have my, my iPad right in front of me. But that's when it, I, I have my time to do certain things that I that are necessary. A lot of my editing is done if I'm not watching TV in the early hours. So that part about putting those um, devices away, that, that, that doesn't seem to fit me. I don't think I would sleep all night anyway. Now, in my mind, we have several different kinds of energies. We have physical energy, obviously, and, th and that's the thing I think that most people are talking about, physical energy. But you also have emotional energy and mental energy. And I think these things affect your, your physical energy, your ability to be able to do what you have to do in the course of a day. You have to prioritize that. We all can't do everything. I notice one thing that I don't do, well, I live in a tiny little cottage. Moosey and I live in a 90-year-old adobe cottage. And I used to decorate the heck out of our big family house, always decorating and wallpapering, painting, gardening, loving it all. Well, I don't have to do that anymore because it's too tiny. I do love to do the gardening. The garden actually is Moosey's biggest enjoyment here besides the children and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. That keeps him going. That social, why am I having trouble saying that? That socialization of family is what keeps him going. Now, me too. Uh, that's, that's up there with, with number one with me too. 
knowing that we can look forward to, and you always have to have something mentally and emotionally to look forward to, that will affect the energy that you have overall. So try and find things that that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be trips or things like that. Mosey and I don't do that much. We are going up to Idaho, which is probably the biggest thing we've done in a couple of years to visit our son and his wife, Bonnie. And we are looking forward to that. No end. So right now we're in a mode of anticipation and motivation for that. And the things that I must do for that is to somehow get an extra suitcase because a lot of the kids threw most of my suitcases away on demolition day, the day of the dumpster thing on my birthday. So I have to get one more suitcase. I think I have one good one out there. But I have to start getting some things together for both Moose and myself, pack both of our suitcases. Those are necessities in my life, but they're good ones that I can look forward to. And I have discovered that my energy level is affected by things that I look forward to and I'm enjoying. Like I can be out for four or five hours running around shopping, thrifting, which I love. And my energy does not get depleted. But if I'm out getting in and out of the car four or five times, getting the pills renewed, picking up the pills, uh, food shopping and and dragging all those those packages. I think one day I had 14 of them that I had to get in the car, get out of the car, and then put the food away. That's not one of my favorite jobs. And I can, by the time I make the first trip in, I'm dragging and Moose notices it. Sometimes I get all the food in, I have it lined up on the counter, and I have to go lie down on the bed because I don't have the mental energy <laughs> or emotional energy to put that stuff away because that takes another half hour. So um, choose your battles on all that. I have decided that when I go out on a day, and sometimes I call that my me day, Moose encourages me to do that because I do have a lot of, of my time is spent in caregiving to my Moosey. Now, most of that I enjoy. I really do. Sometimes I think it would be wonderful if someone else could make the meal or someone else could bring me some coffee in the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you know what? That's okay. I can live with that. So sometimes planning meals that I know Moosey likes makes me happy. So, so some of the caretaking, well, let's say most of the caretaking is fun for me. So that that's not a problem. Physically, sometimes lifting the rollator in and out of the car, that, that gets my energy down, but that's not a biggie. So being on point here, number one, I try not to let myself get bored. First of all, um, the other thing I forgot to mention back there when we talked about the general things of, of uh, diet and everything, you must stay hydrated, and and that means water and um, kind of staying away from the sodas and things. Caffeine in the morning is fine for most people, not to drink it all day long, but stay hydrated because that affects your, your physical ability to stay energized. I am a very up person. I tend to look for the good in people and things. And I am satisfied with a lot of the simple things of life now. Our life is very different uh, from years ago. And the, the raising the children was another wonderful thing. All right. Now, things that I am not. Okay. Or things that I'm an exception to the rule here. Let me try and find these. Having an attitude of gratefulness is so big. Whether you can be physically energetic or not, you still have to be grateful for what you do have. A lot of you can't be physically energetic and that's okay, but try and be energetic in your mind. Keep up with some hobbies. Keep up with 
with, uh, I don't say, you know, the daily goings on because sometimes that can be depressing. What's going on in the world today? You pray, just pray for peace in this world. <sighs> Do motivate yourself. Think of things that motivate you. Think of the fun that you might have that day. Maybe tiny day, you wanna go out. You know what I did this morning? I went outside, I woke up early and I had my took my coffee outside. I listened to the birds and I looked at the flowers. I did have to water some of the bougainvillea. Being alone, I love my alone time too. I think everybody needs alone time. If you live with family or a partner or a spouse, you still need your alone time. That's important. And usually early in the morning when I'm out there, I do. I love it. It's foggy. It's a little bit chilly. I can't even see down in the valley and the planes are flying low overhead. But being out here before the sun is even out, which might not even come out today, is important to me to be able to start my day. And it might sound silly, but getting myself ready for the day by being out here in nature over the years, especially now in my 80s, somehow does a lot for me. The natural light, as you know, I don't sleep all night long. I have these segmented sleeps, but sleep <laughs> does optimize my energy. And even if I sleep during the day, which many times I do to restart myself, that seems to be what gives me my energy. Yesterday on my outing, I gravitated toward the garden area and I did buy more plants. I bought more tulip plants. They were on sale because the tulip situation for Moosey and all the bulbs that he bought during the winter, it just didn't turn out right. And I thought it would bring some happiness to us. As you know, Moose just loves being outside and that's what he enjoys probably more than anything, other than being around all our little tiny great-great-grandchildren. Great-grandchildren, not great-great yet. But just being here, and I might add alone, but out here with Shemu wandering around and Ghost over there and the birds, I need that to get me going in the morning. Something about nature and rebuilding your energy for the day. There's so many things that I know when I wake up that first moment, what's gonna get me out of bed today? What do I have to do today? And being a caregiver, as you know, does involve, many of you are, it does involve a lot of giving to the needs of others. When Moosey wakes up and comes out today, he'll see them. Now, I didn't come home yesterday till mid-afternoon, so he hasn't seen them yet. He's been in the house since then, and I think he'll love these. I listen to my body, and I think that's important. If my body is full of energy, I make use of that time. If I'm feeling that I'm going down, then I just get on my bed and I relax. And I think that's important to understand your body and comply with it. Now I love doing things for Moosey and that motivates me. And I put a lot of physical energy into that. And a lot of that is the gardening, eating the birds. Sometimes that takes physical energy and sometimes it's scary when I'm in the garden trying to um, <laughs> navigate in between the flowers. I have to keep doing that for Moosey because feeding those birds and getting up on the ledges is, is something that I need physical energy for, 
but I can be motivated because it makes him happy. So sometimes your mental attitude for things and your physical energy are one promotes the other sometimes. Does that make sense? I think it does. Now, speaking of prioritizing, I think I have finally realized that I can't do any everything. I used to think I could do everything, and most of the time, I did. If I didn't manage to get certain things, did I faked it, and it looked like I did. This was back in the day. But now I prioritize, and as a caregiver to Musi, number one, that's my number one, and I kind of equate that with taking care of myself too. So I do, I do get out, do things I want. When I feel that I have overdone it, either in the caregiving or in the food shopping or too much whatever, gardening, I have learned to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Or I'll do that later, right now, I have to crash, and I do crash. Now, that might seem funny, but there are times when I find myself walking 10 times slower from the car to come into the house, and I realize I'm dragging, and to me, that's a sign that I need to lie down, and I will do that any time of the day if I feel that I'm pooped, just whatever, in the middle of a job, or if I didn't get a job done, I was supposed to, I listen to those signs. I know my body now, and I will lie down on the bed. Sometimes I'll fall asleep and sleep for two or three hours. I will get up at five o'clock and walk out, and Moosey's sitting in his chair, watching TV, and he'll say, well, hello, good morning. <laughs> I just do it. I've learned to take care of myself and not worry. I have the ability to be able to put things in the back of my head. I don't worry if I haven't vacuumed or I don't worry if I haven't put away the new laundry that I've just brought into the house. I don't worry if I, if on Monday I don't do the wash or something. I don't worry if I go to bed without doing the dishes. I am not totally organized. There's many of those big jobs that lurk in the back of my head, but somehow I do not let it ruin my life because it's not one of those high list things. Um, You know, if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. But I work at these little jobs. That's organizing my closet. I've been doing that for years. It just never gets totally done. So many other little things that I'd love to do around the house. Um, I've, I've talked about it. The patio never got done. And other things too. And the shed is still not completely organized. But you know what? Don't let those things ruin your life. Do what you love as much as you can in addition to those things that you need to do. Now, I try and do all those other things. The sleep issue is not going to change for me, but to make up for those segmented sleeps, if I don't get, you know, seven hours at night and I don't, I will take it two or three hour nap. I don't mean to. They say you should only sleep for 30 minutes. Baloney. If you need a three hour snooze in the afternoon, take it and enjoy it. So if you find yourself overdoing it, crash. It's okay to crash at this point, but don't get bored. Don't allow yourself to get bored. Find some things to look forward to in your life. Keep learning and, and stimulating your mind, your emotional things. Try and, and keep them down. Don't spend your life worrying about things that you don't have any control over, but do take control of your own life. That's important. You know, I better end this now, but if 
if you think you want to talk more about this or if you have any questions, maybe I can do a Q&A about more of this because I know it's important to a lot of you. A lot of you keep saying, how do you do all you do? You know, I push myself. Honestly, I do many times to exhaustion and that's probably not a good thing but i've done it all my life with six kids life was i had to have energy and thank god i did and what else can i say it's the truth it might not be the best advice but it's how i have maintained this ability to be able to do things for my family, things for most that make them happy. And you know what? That in turn makes me happy to still be able to do this. And there, in this conversation, I am not going to leave my Lord and Savior out of this. I get emotional when I talk like this. But if it weren't, <clears throat> if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be able to do all this. He has given mo both Moosey and I this long life to be able to enjoy our family, these little children, all these years. We are still here to enjoy them. We're here to enjoy nature, the garden, each other. We've been married 63 years and I am ever so grateful for all this. I finally have reached a point in my life where if Jesus were to take me up tomorrow, I think I could be okay with that. So I hope that all of you can somehow motivate yourself to get up, <clears throat> to embrace the day, this beautiful world of ours. Don't let these days pass you in boredom, or despair, please find a way to, to lift your spirits, no matter what your life is like. And a lot of your lives are, are probably very different from mine, but be grateful for everything that you do have and try and make yourself happier by, by getting that energy going. I better stop. But if you want to do a Q&A on all this, let me know. And I wish I was a better example for doing the right thing. I'm not necessarily, but it does, it does get us through. I love you all. Thank you for all your support. We'll see you soon again. Bye for now. And God bless us all.